Hello everybody, Andrea Majewski here with Dental L. So let's talk tax time. Now before I even start talking, I want to remind you all that I live here in Ontario. So if you're not from Canada, Ontario-ish area, some of these rules or even any of them may not apply to you, okay? So ask your accountant if you're not sure. But a lot of this is just kind of a general overall, like overall anyway, okay? So come tax time now, it's a little bit different for me because I do own a tutoring business, but also now my mobile hygiene business too, but just so you guys are aware. So with my tutoring and the mobile hygiene business, I do have a separate business registration for those. Now, as a dental hygienist, you don't need that because at least here in Ontario, yes, we are considered, we work for ourselves, but not really. In the sense that when we we're, when we work for an office, we are supposed to be in their payroll as an employee, not as a contractor. I'll say that again. If you go to a dental office and let's say you've never been there before and they tell you that they will hire you as a contractor, meaning they're not taking tax off, you're not in their payroll, say no and walk away. I mean, don't say no, but just say, just simply say, oh, okay, well, that's not what I'm interested in. I'm looking for a job where I'm an employee, okay? People always told me that, but I didn't think anything anything of it. I didn't care. All I did was just make sure to keep track of all of my expenses, income, because if you're not within the tax stuff, your income isn't necessarily being tracked, if that makes sense. And that office doesn't have to claim you as an employee. I do understand a lot more now that I do have my own dental hygiene mobile business and I have been considering hiring people to help me. So I have been looking into this a little bit, but even for me to just simply hire somebody, one person, there's so many forms I have to fill out, which is fine because that's just what you have to do. But that's why a lot of dental offices and they are out there that are telling you that they're just going to hire you as a contractor, meaning they give you a check and that's it. And they don't take any taxes off. Any income you make, you guys, you have to claim it. Otherwise, that's bad and you're doing something wrong. If you're making less than 30000 a year, you don't have to claim that, but let's hope you are, right? And even then, my accountant has always told me, you've got to claim whatever you make because you don't want them coming back at you saying, well, you made this, this, and this, and this. You didn't claim it. Well, now you have to, and then you have to pay more tax. So it's so easy. It's so simple to just be organized. So keep track of all of your income. As soon as you get that check, write it down. And that is if you're working as a contractor, even though you're not supposed to, or even if you're just at the dental office, because yes, they will um, give you a T4 here in Ontario. Um, it's called a T4. You know, it's funny. I don't even know what it's called. I, I just give it all to my accountant, but I believe it's a T4. Um, and that says the income that you have made, because if you're an employee, they have to put that all through their system anyway, because they would claim that on their taxes. The office claims that on their taxes as hiring you as an employee. I'm not going to get into that because unless you own your own business, you don't have to worry about that. So if you need help with that, let, let um, me know. But I don't talk about that here because a lot of you don't own your own office. This is you working as a dental hygienist, right? So, um, so you will get that tax statement February at the latest, and that tells them how much you made, which is easy. You know, if that's all you're doing, it's so much easier for you. You could even use, we have a software here called TurboTax. You just have to input those numbers on the form, answer questions, that's it. But for me, it's more complicated because I work as a dental hygienist at an office twice a week, another office once a week. I have my own dental hygiene mobile practice plus my own business tutoring. So with me, it's very different. I definitely hire an accountant. But let me take a step back for one second. 
if you are a temp hygienist, you are considered a contractor because you don't know which office you are going to work at. So it doesn't make sense to tell them to sign you up as an employee. You might never work there again, or you might work there three times a year, twice a month, and then not until next year. So it doesn't make sense for them to put you on payroll because they don't know if you're going to be back, right? Or how often you're going to work for them. So that's the only instance where you will be called a contractor, called self-employed. As a temp hygienist, it's very, very different because if you're doing that, if you're a contractor, make sure to keep track of all of your income, all of it, make sure to keep track of all of your expenses because you're self-employed, meaning your car payments, your gas, your winter tires, because you need that car to get from point A to point B. But if you are claiming things for your car, you need to also say, if you're doing gas, I should, um, gasoline, you need to say, oh, sorry, I think I hear something. Oh mail but my husband can get that um if you're claiming things for gas then um you need to say who and where you went the um the amount of kilometers it took you to get from point a to point b um and that's it but i mean still that's not something you're used to doing right so something you have to think about so let's say you work at office a on mondays on some Mondays, you have to say you went to that office to do dental hygiene for eight hours. It took you 18 kilometers to get there, you know, whatever. But you have to make note of all of that or they won't accept it as a tax credit. Um, what else? Um, so expenses, income, um, your uniforms you can claim. I can claim things like my mortgage heat hydro because I tutor from home, so I can claim that. Um, but obviously you guys wouldn't be able to. Um, so it just kind of depends on what you're doing. So this is more of a personal thing. So if you guys need help with this, let me know, because I don't want to say to claim this, claim this, claim this, but it depends on your situation. If you're working in the home, if you're working outside of the home, if you're working for like 10 different offices a week, or the same office maybe once a month, but you should still be considered a permanent employee if it's the same office. So situations are a little bit different. And trust me, I have learned this all the hard way by making mistakes and not being organized. And my accountant saying, you're missing some income here. Or, you know, did you only make this much this year? And I'll kind of say no. And he'll say, well, you're missing some income then. Like, where did it go? I have to go and find it. Whereas a lot of offices have either paid me by email money transfer. That's hard to track, honestly, because it's not the name of the person who sends it to you. It's a confirmation number. So always just keep track. So if you have to go back, at least you can look it up by the confirmation number and go from there. So things that I've learned over time. But like I said, it's more of a personal thing. So let me know if you have any questions about this. Good luck. It is so easy once you're organized. Honestly, it is so easy. But good luck, you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.